this coach said he's going to beat you three ways, with his arm, with his feet, and with his mind. He's just that talented. He thinks, this coach thinks he's a big-time college quarterback, maybe NFL prospect also. On the other side of the ball for Johnny Majors was run, run, run. You know Dorsett, you know Martin. Now you're about to meet Billy West. In 1994, he led the Big East with over 1,300 yards rushing. 1995, had a leg injury. In 96, he's back stronger and quicker, they say. We'll see tonight. Okay, Kellen, we will look forward to your reports from down at the field level tonight. Pitt receives to open this version of the backyard ball. From the goal line, it is Curtis Anderson. And Anderson brings it out across the 25, and they say down at the 29-yard line. Well, the starting lineups for Pitt tonight. The Wild West show is back at Pittsburgh as... Uh, Kellen said after missing last year with a fractured leg, 1,358 yards for West his sophomore season. The wide receivers, a little bit of a question mark for the Panthers. Curtis Anderson has got to come up big at split in, and it's a solid group up front. Tony Orlandini at left tackle leads the way. He also is an academic All-American. West on first down. Bounces off the tackle. He will be hit behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down by Elijah Longino along with Bernard Russ. Here are the starters on defense for the Mountaineers. They run with a down three. Now, John Thornton is only a sophomore, but the coaches really like this big fella. Keep an eye on 96 tonight. The linebacking core, the leader, well, Canute Curtis is from Amityville, New York. His teammates call him the Amityville Horro. And in the secondary, solid corner, Mike Logan, number 23. In fact, the scouts say he will play on the next level. West again. Cracked hard as he goes into the line. Canute Curtis is the man who gets there first to make the hit on him. And then Jason Williams also helping out for the Mountaineers at a player down for West Virginia. Defense. So the face mask penalty. And the Mountaineers. Well, Terry Monk's ref, uh, the referee tonight is his microphone not working right now. It's going to be a second down and five. And Mike, a good situation for West Virginia here because a situation where, actually for Pitt, I should say, they're going to have a second down and five. West, he's off and running. Inside the 40s, down to the 39-yard line. Ron, last year, Pitt committed 35 turnovers. They gave up the football 28 times inside their own 50-yard line. This year, they're going to run the football. When you have a tailback like Billy West and you try to shorten the game, help your defense, and that's exactly what they've come out to do tonight. Three straight runs by Billy West. Well, as we mentioned to you, two games last year is all he got to play. A bruised chest and then a broken leg, but you see what he can do quickly. 27 yards on that scamper from scrimmage. Single back, he'll get it again. It takes it close to the 35-yard line. Ron, I think for Pitt to win this football game and to have the kind of season they need to have, Billy West has to carry the ball 25-plus times. He's already carried it four, but you see 133.9-yard average when he carries the ball more than 15 times. They've got to keep giving the ball to Billy West. Chris Schneider comes in at the fullback spot, so Pitt goes back to a two-back set, and you can see two wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. Option play. Lytle will hold on to it. He will be tackled by Henry Slay. That's going to be no gain on the play. And now a third down situation. And they need the 29-yard line to get the first. You know, I talked to Billy West on Wednesday, and he said when he was injured last year and he missed most of the year, he said he didn't feel he was a part of the team. He felt like, you know, he wasn't out in the trenches with the players. He said, I just don't feel like it belonged. Well, tonight, believe me, those other 10 guys on the offensive team, the rest of that team on the sideline, sure glad he's back. He lost one. Lytle did an adoption. It is third down.
West Virginia crowds the line of scrimmage. They get the pitch away, and West will only have the 34 because Bernard Russ, who had 13 tackles against Pitt last year, makes the hit on him. Ron, I was impressed with West Virginia's defense when we were down watch practice on Thursday. They can run. They've got beef up front. They can stop the run. they got linebackers that I think are excellent and probably one of the best secondaries in college football. So Pitt runs out of downs after the 27-yard scamper. Vanderpool goes back deep as you look at Nate Cochran, the senior out of Greenville, South Carolina. This one well into the end zone, and when we come back, we will see West Virginia on offense for the first time tonight. 34 yards in the kick. We'll be back with more from Pitt Stadium after we pause for this. ESPN's presentation of Saturday Primetime is being brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. The 1995 version of the Backyard Brawl featured a game-winning field goal by West Virginia in the waning seconds. As Bobby Bowden's Mountaineers defeated Pitt 17-14, one of the more memorable games in the history of the Backyard Brawl. So we see West Virginia on offense for the first time tonight. And that means the veteran quarterback, Chad Johnston. But behind him, a couple of freshmen. Mark Plants, 46, is the fullback. And Amos Zeroway, number 20, the tailback. Plants, the big fullback, takes it straight ahead. So let's take a look at all the starters on offense for the Mountaineers. Chad Johnston is a senior, and he is healthy for a change. Solid arm and a very smart player. The wide receivers, boy, two of the best in the country. Vanderpool and Saunders. Vanderpool had nine catches for over 200 yards year before last against this Pitt team. And it's a young group up front in the offensive line, anchored by a veteran, Mike Horn, at guard. And he's nursing an injured ankle tonight. So we'll keep an eye on Mike, number 69. First pass, Saunders. Almost for the first down. In fact, let's see where they spot him just shy of the 30-yard line. The starters on defense for Pittsburgh. They lost three of their starting four of the defensive front. Jared Miller, the only of the returning starters, he's at left defensive end. They lost all of their linebackers, all three. The junior college transfer, Ernest Coakley, should help fill the gap there. And in the secondary, John Jenkins is a veteran. In fact, he likes playing against this West Virginia team. He had two interceptions in this game last year. Plants again as West Virginia tries to cross him up, running the fullback, but it is good for the first down. I have known Don Nealon for a long time, and I have to think that this is a departure from what he has done offensively ever. Well, they've, they've decided to go to the 49er offense. Remember, Ron, they've got an offensive line that's very young, a freshman, redshirt freshman, fullback and tailback. They're veterans of the quarterback and wide receivers. You see the statistics in 95, tight ends and fullbacks and tailbacks do not catch the football. That will change tonight with the new change in the offensive philosophy. It's Fisher in motion back against the line of scrimmage. Zero away off and running. And West Virginia says, we got our own number 20. And he's going to score it from 69 yards. Don Nealon in his office the other day was talking about his young tailback and he said I'd be willing to bet after Saturday night people know about Amos. Amos zero away with great blocking to the left side. Vanderpool, Rashawn Vanderpool number 26 with a key block downfield to open it up to the tailback. Extra point is good. So let's take a break. Jay Taylor is the man who kicked it. 7 to nothing, West Virginia. We'll be right back. 
Well, we talked a lot about this number 20 off the top of the telecast tonight. And as I said, in the touchdown run, West Virginia shows that they have their own number 20. In fact, two unbelievable runs by these tailbacks early. But Zeraway took his 69 for a touch. Well, that was the impressive thing about the redshirt freshman able to go the distance. And I think it's, and I still feel like it's important in this game tonight to get a good start. Curtis Anderson from just inside the five. And let's go down to the sideline to Kellen Winslow. Kellen, pretty good start for a first carry for his new university, 69 yards, huh? Not bad at all, Ron and Mike. If you notice, it's airway. He took the ball off the left side behind two 300-pounders, and he doesn't get touched until he gets well into the secondary. Coach Nealon said he had a great uh, deal of talent. Experience, inexperience does not mean he, he's incapable. Very capable running back. We're going to see a lot of this young man for years to come. Well, I think Pitt's seen all of him that they want to see tonight, Kellen. He could head on back to Morgantown. Short drop, Lytle under pressure, and he's going to be knocked down. And that's John Thornton, the young man we were talking about, the, the sophomore out of Philadelphia that the coaches have spoken so highly of. John Thornton gets a push up the field and good pressure on Matt Lytle. Never gave him a chance to set. He was trying to throw the quick three-step drop pattern. It's going to be a loss of three. Matt Lytle, 6'4", 225 pounds. He's only a sophomore. Drop play. Billy West going to be knocked down for maybe a yard gain as Baum comes in to make the hit. And let's check in for the first time tonight with Mike Tirico. Hi, Michael. Hello, Ron. This McDonald's breakaway takes us to the Commonwealth. Louisville taking on Kentucky on the deuce. And Raymond McClown fumbles the ball. Rico Clark picks it up, goes back 50 yards. On the drive before, Louisville blocked a Kentucky punt that led to a score. That's why the cards are up 10 on Kentucky. Ron? Ooh, Kentucky needs to hustle to make it a horse race, huh? Third down. The line to make is the 41. And it's a draw play, and West is going to be hit in the backfield by Henry Slay and knocked down for another loss, this time almost five yards. Ron, I think it's better. You, you get in a long yardage situation, people, are, defenses are expecting to draw. They've got to be able to line him up and run the sprint draw in the isolation. Matt Light is going to come back, giving the ball deep. But see, West Virginia is reacting so fast. Henry Slay's in the backfield. So the draw fooled no one. Give him the ball, let him attack the line of scrimmage. One of the stronger areas for Pitt, they're punting. Nate Cochran stands back, his longest 69 last year, and he averaged almost 43 a kick. Short punt, Vanderpool comes up to feel it, and oh, does he get punished. Ball is loose inside the 30-yard line. Pitt football. makes the recovery Rashawn Vanderpool really shouldn't have handled this football you make a call you make a word call and get away from the football and he just never had the football took a lick and fumbled the football give a, a break and a life to a Pittsburgh offense that's been struggling it was Humphrey who made the hit on him Mike and caused the football to come loose now I think, Ron, you just go right back to what you did the first three plays of the line, line of scrimmage. Give the ball to Billy West. Let him attack the line of scrimmage. Well, the concern of West Virginia is Vanderpool, who, when they got him to the sideline, is down, and the trainers are working with him. We'll get a report just as soon as we can. Lytle on first down. Lots it. Incomplete and way overthrown. Now this is how important he is to this ball club. 95 receptions, just over 1,600 yards, nine touchdowns, and look at the average per catch. But Mike, you're right. He picked up a ball that he had let go and he should not have taken. Yeah, he had already made the call. He was alerting his teammates to get away from the football. He needed to do the same thing. Hit 
in the backfield again, and it's Henry Slay. Wow, that's two individual stops for a loss for Slay tonight, the big junior out of Ohio. John Marzak is blocking on Henry Slay, and because John Thornton takes up so much room inside, they let Henry Slay move around a little bit, and he took a made a move on John Marzak, and Marzak can't handle him right now, so they're going to have to double-team Henry Slay to get any kind of movement on that left side. If you just joined us, 7 to nothing at West Virginia on a 69-yard run from scrimmage by Zaraway, but West Virginia has just fumbled the ball back to Pitt. Lytle, under heavy pressure, knocked out of bounds by Knute Curtis. And they're going to say out at the 35, so it's going to be a fourth down at about 15 for the first down. Well, when you play against a quarterback that's mobile like Matt Lytle, your pressure really has to come from the outside. Canute Curtis is going to come from the outside, forcing Matt Lytle not to be able to get outside. You're going to see number 42 come up here and make the play, and John Thornton, number 96, with the inside pressure. West Virginia is just handling Pitt's offensive line right now. Just a mismatch. Mike Cochran is going to have to punt it away, so two wonderful opportunities go by the board for Pitt. Logan is back deep for Vanderpool. They're going to go for it, and the ball is dropped. Good heavens, he hit him right in the numbers, and it was Curtis Anderson. Timeout. West Virginia 7. Pitt nothing. Oh, we're back, 7 to nothing. West Virginia leading over Pitt. Zaraway with a 69-yard run from scrimmage. And the big story in this ballgame so far has been the West Virginia defense stopping Pitt twice in their own territory, in fact, inside the 40. Fake it to Zaraway. Pressure and the pass incomplete. Mark Plants is the man that he intended to pass for in the flat. The young freshman fullback. And Mike, let's talk about the fake punt again. Well, any time a team's going to kick inside the 40-yard line, you have a punt safe. But here's Bernard Rush, number 91. He's like counting his money here, getting ready to go to the bank. And all of a sudden, you get a fake punt. Now, Curtis Anderson, who's the best receiver on this pit team, wide open, just drops the football. They lose a great opportunity there. Oh, Michael. I mean, he was at the 20-yard line. <laughs> and with a missed tackle, he scores. That's for sure. And, and forensic, that's well within his range. They don't pick up another yard. That's Foreman in motion at the top of your screen. Quick pass, and it's dropped by Wavell, the tight end. Pressure coming from Ernest Kirkley, the junior college transfer we told you about. He played on the best junior college defense in the nation last year. There's no doubt he's an outstanding linebacker. And you look at West Virginia right now. He's zero away, takes off, and runs the first uh, score for West Virginia. And they come out throwing. But that's the change in the philosophy. They've gone to the Bill Walsh 49er offense. They want to open it up. They want a timing offense. They want to take pressure off their offensive line. Saunders, top of your screen. Foreman, down at the bottom. The two wide receivers. Johnson going to go on top. Saunders, the man that he wanted, but it's double coverage. Whitmill, one of the first men over on the cover. Also getting help from John Jenkins. Rashad Whitmill, number two, was injured uh, all week, so he's, he's doing a good job right now early in this game. Mike, what is about to happen turned into a real weak spot for West Virginia last year. They went from the best punting team the two years prior to that to really having problems with their special teams. Don Nalen said when they punted last year, he used to cover his eyes. He didn't even want to watch it. Number 36, Brian West, will take over for Stillings, who had been the punter last year. 105th in the NCAA. Not good. And now a timeout has been called by West Virginia to talk it over. They were one man short of the special teams. And you don't think that gets in the coach? Don Nealon may not have watched last year. He's probably not going to watch this year either. So let's take a timeout. 7 0 West Virginia. We're back with 6.20 left to play in this first quarter from Pitt Stadium. 
West to get the kick away. This is Jenkins from the 27. And now here comes a flag way downfield at the 25. It's a 39-yard punt and eight on the return. Ken Koenig, a linebacker. Illegal block in the back on the return team. Guilty of that foul, Ron. Well, you'll see up to 100 great college football games, not on uh, TV in your area from ESPN Game Plan. Only $69 for the first season. Call your cable operator or direct TV. So Pitt takes over the worst field position that they have started with tonight. Billy West had an outstanding opening series, hasn't gone so well since then. Gets it again. Five, ten, counted off at 11 yards as Charles Emanuel is there to make the tackle from his strong safety position. That's where Billy West is the best. He's, he's a runner that's going to be five, six, seven-yard runner when he's attacking the line of scrimmage. But Ron, the surprise to me is they've always had success the left side. That's their best lineman, but it's a cutback run for Billy West since he's made the most yardage. See him cut back to the right. Schneider with a good block, number 32, the fullback. Snyder gets the handoff, and in fact, he almost collided with his quarterback, Lytle. Yeah, that play bombed from the start. Matt Lytle and the timing, and you expect that in the first ball game sometimes. Matt Lytle, I believe, is the key to this Pitt football team. Billy West, we know what he can do, but Matt Lytle is a good athlete. You've got to be able to get him on the corner with play action and naked and running the option. They visited their coaching staff, visited with Nebraska, so they built in some option plays. Well, not only does Johnny Majors like this young man, Don Needham made no bones about it. He said he's going to be a great one. I really like his talent. South Bar delivers it. Incomplete. Now we've got a flag. It was intended for John Jones. That may be pass interference, but Mike, right now, the pit receivers need to be flagged for a really a horrible job. They're dropping footballs that are hitting them right in the hands. Well, Matt Lido, you're right, Ron. Put that ball right on the money to John Jones. He's got to make that catch. And when you look at John Jones, 86, he's 6'4 and 240. Last year, Pittsburgh threw 182 passes and only completed 10 to the tight ends. This might be the reason. He can't hold on to the football. He should have made that catch, although yeah. there's interference on the play. Mike, let me tell you something. Had he caught that, that would have been half as many as they caught in the first nine games because the tight ends accounted for two catches in the first nine. Those other eight came in the last two ball games. Well, there's no doubt they've had trouble there, but they've got a junior college player, Juan Williams, number 84. They're expecting some big things out of it. 4.56 left to play in this opening quarter. West Virginia 7, hit nothing. Now, we may get a flag on this now. Orlandini came off sides, and then you could see he's him banging himself in the head. Schultz, I beg your pardon. And then it, it almost appeared as though a punch was thrown. Dead ball foul before the snap false start on the offense. It will remain first down. Now, let's see. Curtis jumped first, and then Schultz came right after him. Ron, this is a running formation for Pitt. They've got two tight ends in the ball game. What they're trying to do now, they're having so much trouble with this front of West Virginia, they're trying to balance them up with one more man in the line of, man in the line of scrimmage. Option play, Billy West. Better get outside, and he barely gets the corner turned as Bastine, Perlo Bastine, knocks him off his feet. One of the things that you go to as an offensive coach when you're struggling with the front is you try to balance them up with that second tight end, and I would look for Pitt to stick with this. Knut Curtis with the force, and Lytle probably is going to say, if we run the option, I hope we don't run it to that side too many times more. Or he won't be in the ballgame. 
Jake Hofitz in the ball game number nine. He's a possession type receiver for Pitt. Transfer from Pacific. Roll the pocket, and there is another drop pass. Hover. That's three that Pitt receivers have dropped tonight. Wow. He was open. He played two years at Sacramento City College, then decided to go to Pacific. They dropped football, and now he's here at Pitt. Caught five passes last year. Had a chance for his first catch. Took his eye off the ball and took his eye right away to Perlo Bastine. They're working on the young defensive back. That's Gary Nord. He's the wide receiver coach. Looks for Howard Schnellenberger at Oklahoma and Louisville. Outstanding coach. So they got a third down. And if Pitt wants to keep this thing going, they need it to the 47 and a half yard line of West Virginia. Mountaineers lead it, seven to nothing. Blitz coming up the middle. They pick it up, and then he runs right into the defensive end. Henry Slay is there, and Bernard Russ also on the stop. That's the third sack of this opening quarter. And what Pitt didn't want to happen is the fact that they get long yardage situations because West Virginia likes the blitz. They think they have the secondary to man up with their wide receivers. They're not catching the ball anyway. It's attacked the quarterback by the West Virginia defense. I'm a little surprised Vanderpool is back deep for West Virginia. So obviously his ribs are better than we thought, Mike. Cochran with the kick. Fair catch this time, and he makes it. And let's go down to the sideline and check in with Kellen. You got a little bit more on that injury, I understand. Yeah, Ron and Mike Vanterpool has bruised ribs. He they wanted to hold him out, but he was fighting with the trainer to get his helmet back to go back into the ball game. As you can see, he was waving his arm coming out. He's going to be a little bit sore, but he wants to play this ball game badly. Kellen, they probably told him to fair catch that ball, and for a couple reasons. One, he's even a veteran, but they'd like to get him right back in there and make a catch, feel good about himself. They've got two outstanding other receivers, David Saunders and Sean Foreman, so they'll get him back in this game. Yeah, they brought him out and set him down, and they're going to work him back in slowly, Coach. Okay, Kellen. Chad Johnston, zero way gets the handoff, and oh my, he's human. He only gained a couple. <laughs> well, then Don Nalen, I'm sure, felt like they weren't throwing the ball very well. Let's go back to the eye and get the ball back in Amos Zeroway's hands. Eight, six, and two against Pitt, beginning his 17th year in Morgantown, West Virginia. As you see the clock running down just under three to play in his first quarter. across the 30, the 35, and almost the 36-yard line. And let's check in quickly with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, this McDonald's breakaway takes us to Boulder, where Coy Detmer looked pretty darn good coming back off of last year's knee injury. 20 of 33 is passing stats, 254 yards, one of three touchdowns throwing there. He also ran one as Colorado was able to handle Washington State today, 37 to 19. Full scores and highlights with Kirk Herbstreit and Lee Corso when we see you at halftime. Ron and Mike. Okay, Mike. So the Colorado Buffaloes off and running as expected. Zeroway hit behind the line of scrimmage, breaks a tackle, and he winds up picking up nine yards in the play. What kind of strength the youngster has in his legs as Jason Chavis finally stops it. Well, Ron, you see West Virginia in the eye. That's Don Nalen's pass. That's Doyt Perry and Bowling Green where he went to school and the Woody Hayes principles. You want to run the football. Pitt knows that when they're in the eye, it's a run or a play action pass. And they got good penetration out of Mike Mooring, but they just didn't make the play on Amos Zeroway. the guard a quick trap and the big fullback plants takes it over midfield and in fact that's going to be enough for the first down inside the 45 yard line when you have a veteran quarterback like chad johnston who's been in this game now three straight years as the west virginia quarterback he can go to the line of scrimmage 
find the defensive nose guard lined up on the outside of the guard and check off to a trap, which he just did with Anthony Green, and the change move. Great call by Chad Johnston. Pitch shows blitz, they stay at home. Johnston's pass, got it. Then he drops it, incomplete at the 33. That's a good job on defense by Whitmill. Number six, David Saunders, the intended receiver. Rashad Whitmill is the best corner on this Pitt football team. He's the best cover guy. He's the fastest player on this Pitt team. But what he did is, and you can see he's hurt, but by this right hand, he was able to come down and strip that ball away from David Saunders. Well, we didn't know how much this young guy was going to play tonight, did we? No, he hasn't practiced. And that's a fear you have as a coach. When a guy doesn't practice and all of a sudden you're playing, he may make some mistakes. Groin injury. Johnson's pass at zero away. Breaks one. Can't break the second, but he... Nope, now they're going to say his knee was down just short of the first down. Connick got it. Here's the beauty of the 49er offense mixed in with the eye. All of a sudden now... Amos Zaraway, you run up the middle. Now you throw him the ball outside. He makes the catch, and if you miss a tackle, he's off to the racetrack. Key points of a 49er offense, it's on time. Quarterback quick releases, gives your offensive line. You don't have to protect as long. Attacks the underneath coverage, yards after the catch. Remember Jerry Rice, all the yards he gets for the 49ers. Progression routes, you always have a check down guy. The third route, and that's what they did. Amos Zaraway moves the change. Big fullback Green this time. Anthony Green, 6'2, 240. Another freshman will pick up the first down. Catch ESPN College Football Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Kick off the season as Notre Dame battles Vanderbilt. But first, start it off right at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time with the weekend kickoff show. With that, the end of the first quarter, 7-0, West Virginia on the strength of a 69-yard run by Amos Zeroway. Well, the West Virginia defense getting a rest, and so far they have stopped the hope of Pitt, and that's Billy West. West 10 carries 41 yards, and the number 20 of West Virginia is the one who has stepped up huge in this ball game. Zeroway, the freshman, 102 yards in the opening quarter. 80 rushing, 22 passing. Johnson got a man. Touchdown, Vanderpool. yards and Mike Gutford you talk about a case of huge guts here's a man with bruised ribs and he goes parallel to the ground to make the touchdown catch. when you talk about West Coast offense and, and Bill Walsh offense you need receivers like Jerry Rice and John Taylor with Sean Vanderpool is the college version for West Virginia you could see he was in pain as he came to the sidelines Chuck Brown is in pain as well because it's him that they threw over for the 38-yard touchdown. Chad Johnston was looking where the free safety John Jenkins was lined up. Man coverage on the outside. Vanderpool is going to run by and run a corner route here for West Virginia. You're going to see the free safety after we start the play. The free safety is going to appear. There's John Jenkins. He's coming up. There's no one to defend right there. Now the corner route to Rashawn Vanderpool. Wide open touchdown. But what Pitt was trying to do was slide John Jenkins up inside. But Rashawn Vanderpool with the corner route, the touchdown, a great throw by Chad Johnston. And let's check in with Kellen Winslow down on the sideline. Kellen? Ron and Mike, I'm standing right here next to Vanderpool, who came off the field after making that outstanding catch and hitting the ground so hard. Stopped, took off his helmet, and then threw up right in front of one of the trainers. We're looking at him right now, checking him out, making sure everything is okay. 
He's a tough cookie. He may go back in the ball game. Who knows? Kellen, uh, I can tell you from the replay, he came down on the football. And for a guy who's got bruised ribs, uh, I can understand why he uh, threw up when he got to the sideline. I'm surprised he made it that far. Well, he was walking off the field. He had a glazed look in his eyes. He took another two or three steps. He stopped and took his helmet off. He seems to be up and moving around. Oh, but this kid he wants, wants to, to go play. Back in. Yeah, that's, there's no doubt about it. But you, uh, I don't think he needs to fall on the football anymore tonight if he's going to play in the coming weeks. So, with the kickoff from the seven yard line this is Curtis Anderson got an opening at the 40 one man to beat and he just across midfield he'll be knocked down but that is a great return and great field position as Charles Emmanuel came from the special teams to make the tackle number two So now Pitt has got to get something going. Uh, the first minute of this second quarter, they're down 14 to nothing, and they want to make sure that they keep West Virginia within reach and not let this thing get away in the first half. 50 yards on that return. Play action didn't do anything. Lytle loses the ball. Canute Curtis causes the fumble and then makes the recovery. Talk about doing it all yourself. Remember what I said earlier. When you play against a mobile quarterback that they're going to try to get to the corner, you've got to bring pressure from the outside. Canute Curtis, number 42, is coming from the right side and makes the play on Matt Lytle, strips the ball, and gets great field position. You're going to see him at the top. Right here, number 42, he does not allow Matt Lytle to get outside of him. Now he just hits him, the ball comes loose. Canute Curtis on the ball, West Virginia in business on offense. For the opening sequence, Billy West goes 27 yards with a run from scrimmage and would look for the world as if Pitt was going to light it up offensively. And it has gone steadily downhill since then. Johnston going to run it. And he wisely goes down at the 45. The, the situation with him, Mike, he's finally healthy. He stayed banged up all last year, particularly after this game. He's going to be smarter this season, I think. Well, he's an outstanding quarterback, Ron. I want to go back to the touchdown play. And what Chad Johnston saw when he looked up, this is a corner. This is a corner. So that means if both corners are on that side, it's a blitz. Now, so he knows he's got a blitz coming. He's got one-on-one. -on -one. The only question is the free safety. Stop it right here. Here's the free safety. That's John Jenkins. So it's one-on-one -on -one all the way. Chad Johnson read it perfect through the touchdown pass. Branch. And the fullback inside the 45 is to the 43 as Pegram and Curtis McGee combine on the stop. And that's a gain of five. And Mike, one thing that you need to make note of, rarely has West Virginia been held under four, five yards of carry every time they've run the ball this ball game. You're exactly right, but what's opened the running game is their passing game. You know, the, the fear of Vanderpool and Saunders. We haven't even seen Saunders yet in Foreman. They're two outstanding receivers. And when you have those three receivers, they're all in the game right now. This is a tough set for Pittsburgh right here. That's Foreman just going out of your picture, number 16. Johnston, the pass, that's complete to number six, Saunders. And David just misses the first down. He's a big receiver at 6'2", 205. He's a sophomore. Well, here again, Bill Walsh's offense, the 49er offense. you got three receivers in a cluster. Stop it right here. Stop. Right here. you got one. The other one's right here. And you got a wide open flat player. Chad Johnson just going to read it outside, inside the backside. And he makes the completion to David Saunders. Ron, it's like picking corn. Brown and Humphrey, the two folks that were uh, pulling the kernels on that one. Going to be fourth down, and West Virginia is not going to take a chance unless it's a fake. West in the ball game and punt formation on fourth and one. Kicks it very, very high. Jenkins runs away from it. Going to hit at the five. 
And it'll go into the end zone. So it's a 38-yard putt. West Virginia continues to lead 14 to nothing, and they didn't want to take a chance. They punted with fourth and one. ESPN's presentation of Saturday Primetime is being brought to you by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worked. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried and Kellen Winslow from Pitt Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on a very comfortable, actually a great football evening. Temperature in the mid-60s, supposed to go into the upper 50s tonight. West Virginia's really enjoying it. They're up 14 to nothing. Just under 12 to play until halftime. And that running play goes for very short yardage as West is upended by Russ. What Pitt has to do on offense is key, stay with Billy West, but they've got to get Matt Lytle some success. Three-step drop, quick passes where he can get the completion, dump offs to his back, just little short routes that don't take a long time to develop because of the rush of West Virginia, but get Matt Lytle some success. West had a 27-yard run in that opening series. Has not been able to duplicate it since because it plays like that. Bob Vaughn, number 45. The junior out of Latrobe, Pennsylvania, makes penetration and stops it for no gain. And the worst thing you get into a situation, you don't want to be in third and long when Matt Light or you're trying to have success with him. But you can't give up on trying to roll him out just because Canute Curtis made a play. But you may run away from Canute Curtis a little bit more and try to go the opposite direction. Of course, you got a left-hand quarterback. You want to try to roll him to the left as much as possible. Well, let's see what they've designed here, Mike. It's third down, and they need the 30. They want to keep this drive going. Blitz. Canute Curtis, and the ball thrown. It is caught by Juan Williams, the tight end. Here's why Matt Lytle is going to be a star in the Big East, because he has good feet. Mike Number eight, going back to set up. Canute Curtis on an inside move. Nobody blocks him, but he's able to get away and make this play. I like that about Matt Lytle. He's got good feet, can avoid the rush. Then throws the ball down to Juan Williams to make the catch. Mike gets the first reception of the ball game. First completed pass by Pitt. Straight ahead, Snyder the ball carrier. Baum is down at the bottom of that stack. West Virginia, when Pitt lines up in an I formation, is cheating the free safety up to give them eight people close to that line of scrimmage. First down is a good down for Pittsburgh to try to throw the ball against Don Malin's defense. Kirk McMullen checks right into the ball game. He was a youngster, freshman out of Imperial, Pennsylvania. 6'4", 255 pounds. This youngster has gained a lot of weight. Option. He'll keep it. Crosses the 43 to the 44 as Williams and Emmanuel combine on the stop. Close to the first down, but from where the where the uh, side judges come in, it's going to be short. And a player is down for West Virginia. Ron, I like this set by Pittsburgh. It's a two tight end set, and that balances up the defense. Matt Lytle almost, if he could have turned up just a play or a step before, would have made a few more yards. But this kind of uh, formation with the two tight ends gives Pittsburgh a chance to run the football with Billy West a little bit better than the I formation. Now you can see they're trying to push that uh, pant leg up, and that is the knee that he has binding on. And that's what they're checking over. Well, catch the NASCAR Mountain Dew Southern 500 from Darlington Raceway tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Jeff Gordon, currently second of the Winston Cup point standings, defends his title. Dale Jarrett uh, could become the second driver in Winston Cup history to win the Winston Cup million with a win in this one. 1 o'clock tomorrow. And let's check in quickly with Mike Tirico. Mike, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, in the swamp, it's a tie game. Yes, Florida's offense has scored three touchdowns. Their defense has scored three touchdowns on the Jake Delhomme pass. Tico Brown, the interception, and count them as they go by. A lot of raging Cajuns are trying. Lee Corso counted seven of them. Nobody got him. 26 yards, spectacular touchdown. Put him on offense. Gainers by 35. Okay. Thanks, Mike. 14 to nothing, our score. Let's go back and look at that play as they're helping 
Williams off the field. And I think what happened is Mike, his own teammate, caused the injury. Watch right here. That's Russ who catches you right on the outside of that knee. Ron Pittsburgh is going to stay with the two tight end offense. Now this is either going to be a run play or a quick pass or an option to the left side. I would believe they'd go that way. Schulters in the ball game with the third down and short. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if he got the first down or not. No, in fact, the linesman coming in from across the way. John Hadley got lumber on him first. Not even close. Uh, they were lined up with the uh, ball to go to the left side. West Virginia just stacked it up. Not even close. But the re re reason they're going to the left side is because they believe in Tony Orlandini, the left tackle, the junior who's 6'5", 300 pounds. They think he's his best lineman. Well, the crowd right now is beginning to cheer for Pitt because they want to see him go for it, and that's what's going to happen. Ken Karcher, the offensive coordinator, and he has sent in the instructions, and here we go. Fourth down. Just under a yard to pick up the first down. Pitt trails 14 to nothing. Trying to draw him offside. Long timeout. You, you try to draw them offside. If they don't come offside, you take the delay a game penalty and punt the football. Nate Cochran will come on and they will kick it away. So they tried to get the offside, couldn't get it to work. West Virginia showing great discipline on the defense and they'll punt it away. Logan is the man back deep for West Virginia, number 23. And in fact, he's got a little bit of an ankle turn, <laughs> but Vanderpool's got the ribs, so I guess they decide that still Logan is well enough that he can go. Terry Monk, our referee tonight uh, in his crew, marching off the five yards. They had almost failed to do that, and then they just marked it. Great kick by Cochran. Wow. This is going to hit in the air at the three, and it takes a Pittsburgh bounce out of bounds at the six-and-a-half-yard line. What a missile. Timeout on the field, 14 to nothing, West Virginia. That is a 57-yard punt by Cochran. And now for a Burger King students of the game from West Virginia sophomore center, Eric DeGroo. He's a biology major with a 3.94 GPA. And from Pitt, junior running back Billy West. He's a civil engineering major with a 3.0 GPA. Burger King congratulates these fine student athletes. Right well, and look from the goalpost where West Virginia is scrimmaging. The six and a half yard line following that beautiful punt by Cochran of 57. Chad Johnston, who's had an outstanding night. Senior from Peterstown, West Virginia. Zeroway gets by one, gets by a second, and he's loose. In the secondary at the 30, still putting on moves, and he'll take it all the way out to the 38-yard line. Harris makes the tackle, but that is a 32-yard run. And the coaches of West Virginia said he'll make you miss. He broke all Jim Brown's Long Island High School rushing records. Amos Zaraway is a special running back. And Ron, you talk about the field position. Look where they're lining up. Amos Zaraway is going to change that field position right away. Bad tackling in the secondary by Curtis McGee, number 35. Another bad tackle by Rashad Van Whitmill, number two. But those are guys that didn't practice. him up with the fullback 46 mark plants mark is a big fella freshman out of south charleston west virginia he's 6 3 235 and he tried to describe to his coach that he wants to carry the ball more if possible because he says he is really a tailback in a fullback's body well he may be a tailback in a fullback's body but there's a tailback behind him in a tailback's body so he's going to block and uh, every now and then he'll get the ball but amos zaraway is the man they want with the football at west virginia Boy, on this night, he will become famous Amos Zero. 
Gary Mott, number 25, the senior out of Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. And let's go down to the sideline and check once again with Kellen Winslow. Kellen? Ron and Mike, we've got Vanderpool in the ambulance. I do believe they're about to take him to the hospital. He was complaining about not being able to take a deep breath and was in quite a bit of pain. Uh, they had him on the stretcher taking him out. They're about to pull away in the ambulance right as we speak. Well, I tell him I'm certainly not a doctor, but he already had injured the ribs, and he came down on that football, and I'm not so sure that he didn't do more damage to himself when that happened. Surely didn't look very pleasant. It's quite possible he's having a lot of difficulty breathing. Saunders makes the catch, gets banged, knocked backwards, still picks up another yard. Kellen, I know you like David Saunders. You were over there watching practice with us. And when you have veteran receivers, David Saunders is a senior. He's 6'2", 205. He'll pick up the slack in this West Virginia offense. 38 reception last year. Don't forget Sean Foreman. Now, they've got two good guys. They can't afford another injury, but they've got enough depth to make up for Rashawn Vanderpool not being on the field. Indeed, they do. I think David Saunders had a big game against uh, Pitt last year. He's going to step up the pace here. Second down. They need the 41-yard line of Pitt. 14 to nothing. West Virginia leads. Zero away. Back in the ball game. Nothing to the left. And I'll tell you, if he doesn't get tripped up there, he had a big defensive lineman, Frank Moore, to get around. But it was Roderick Humphrey who tripped him up. And they'll have a third down at about four. Roderick Humphrey, if he didn't make that tackle, I believe famous Amos would have been around the corner again have. for a touchdown. Might have run it back into the boundary and, and been gone because, as I said, Frank Moore was the only one over there with him. They can forget about that famous Amos cookie guy in uh, Morgantown, right? This is the new famous Amos. He's crumbled in. On third, they swing it out to Zeroway. Tries to get somebody to miss, and that is a nice open field tackle by Whitmill. Rashad Whitmill, the sophomore out of Friendstown, Texas, makes the stop, and it's going to be fourth for West Virginia. Even though that play doesn't work, it strikes fear in the pit defensive coaches because when you get Amos Zaraway out there and all of a sudden he makes that catch, you better make the tackle. You've got one guy to make the tackle. If you don't, big things are going to happen. West is back to punt. Jenkins, John Jenkins, the junior out of East McKeesport, Pennsylvania, back to the pit. the five and now look at this bounce it's going to be bound at the two yard line by Ken Fisher so Pitt will take it over with their back against their goal line it is a 45 yard punt and this man right here has been fantastic Kerry Monk the gentleman in the white hat veteran official in the Big East Conference for total yardage in this game tonight, West Virginia 215 at Pitt 43. Ron, I thought it was important to get off to a good start for the winner, but I still think Pitt's in this ball game. Billy West is capable of getting back in this ball game. It's a rivalry. This game's not over yet. Oh, I, I was about to make the point of all the, the comebacks. <laughs> you certainly can't say this one's over. The Schneider will take it for one. Bobby Bowden's team led by a count of 35 to 8 at halftime against Pitt. Lost the ball game 36 to 35. That's a pretty sizable lead. Your ball club was down 31 to 3 in 1989. Came back and tied it at 31. So, folks, all I can tell you is don't go away just because Pitt only has 45 yards now. <laughs> no, and as long as you got the number 20 on Pitt's team, Billy West, he can make things happen. Matt Lido just has to get untracked a little bit. The Pitt coaches have to help him. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of like a first game for everybody. He's in a hurry. He needs to kind of slow it down a little bit. Get in with him. There's West. Look at that quick cut to the outside, and what an outstanding tackle by Bernard Ross. I told you he had 13 tackles in this game last year, and he's picking up where he left off at the end of last season. Well, what's happening is the defensive line's absorbing all the blocks of the pit line, and number 91 just skates out and makes the play. There's nobody to block him. I really believe the fullback went the wrong way on that play because there was not a lead blocker unless they were trying to misdirect the linebacker and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, the influence block did not influence, did it? This is the worst situation for Pitt to be in, I think. Third down with a young quarterback and receivers have got the jittery hands. Would you bring him? You don't want to turn over here. Would you bring him? No, but I, I play heavy coverage on that lighter. Now they stay at home and there's the pass well off the mark. In fact, I'm not sure who that was to. 
And it's fourth down, and now West Virginia is going to get the football back with 2.53 left on the clock. Now make your point here on the punting team. I know you've, uh, we've talked about this, and uh, go ahead. Long snapper, we talked about it, that the new rule, that they cannot put a defensive man on the long snapper's uh, nose and hit him. Exactly. Which I think is a good rule, because you see how he's looking for the punter. He snaps the football. He's got to be able to get his head up for, for at least a second. A and, then down, and then sprint down. And then sprint down the field. And Mike, the one that it really helps is the long snapper for West Virginia, who is the safety Van Washington. We'll show you him for the night show. Logan inside the 30, still going, and he is down to the 19-yard line. And let's go quickly to the sideline. Kevin Winslow is with a former great here at Pitt. Anybody there? I can't hear anything. Kellen, we, uh, we got you. We're down on the field here with Hugh Green, the All-American from Pitt. You, you spoke with the team yesterday. What did you say to them? Well, I told them that there's the beginning of everything and that today was the beginning. And uh, right now they're down by 14 points, but they, they sort of dug a hole for themselves. But they're not out of it. They can go in and regroup themselves and do a lot of different things that's necessary for them to go and make themselves recognized. And, they got to believe. They're not believing in stuff, and hopefully, if they get out of this half with it just 14 nothing, we can see. Counter Back up to you guys. Zeroway is just absolutely running pit crazy. That is good for 16 yards, and Zeroway, he was over 100 yards at the end of the first quarter, and this young man is going for a huge total for his first night. 128 and one touchdown. And Ron, Hugh Green. The way he looks, he better not get real close to Johnny Majors because he's liable to throw him in the game. <laughs> he still looks like he can play. First down, straight ahead. Plant, the fullback. Did he get in? Check it. It's Anthony Green, the fullback, and they'll say at the half yard line, Anthony is five pounds larger than Plant's, actually, at 245. Well, he came off the mark, and he's a redshirt freshman also. They've got two redshirt freshmen fullbacks. Number 40, uh, 49, Six, Anthony Green. And 46 plants. Both of them are, uh, are freshmen. And they brought Canute Curtis into the ball game. The block. Two-way performer. Second down, straight ahead. Hip says no, sir. And the linesman also says no, as Phil Clark is down at the bottom of that stack, and Anthony Green could not take it in. As close as they are, Chad Johnston may want to call his own number. There's Canute Curtis. Saw him run on the field, and that's why I was shocked at 42 uh, coming on the field. And see, he gives you that little bit of defensive uh, fierceness in the hu offensive huddle. Let's block him and get on in this end zone. Clark. Chad Johnston may want to call his own number here. About to go under one minute to play this opening half. Runs into his own blocker, and Green is going to be held for a two-yard loss this time. And this is what Pitt needed on defense. They may force Don Nalen into a field goal situation here, but that was a nice stand by the Pitt defense, and Chuck Drisbeck, the defensive coordinator. Well, it's decision time for Don Nalen. Hugh doesn't even need shoulder pads. Jared Miller is the man who led the attack. 34 seconds down to 33. The 25 second clock right now is 10. They're not going to try to get this play off. They're just going to let it run on down and make a decision when the timeout comes. Two seconds down to one, and they call the timeout then. Ron, I think you kick the field goal. Even though you've had problems with your field goal, you go up by 17 right here, take no chances. It's a, it's a big momentum builder for Pitt. And let's check in quickly with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, we are just seconds away from the GMAC halftime report. Big story out of Athens today. What happened in Jim Donnan's debut? Well, will they meet for a chance for the Heisman when Tennessee and Florida meet in a few weeks? We'll see the first act for the two stud quarterbacks of the SEC. And a couple of freshmen making a big impact on opening Saturday for college football. Scores and highlights coming up at the half. Ron? Okay, Mike. Uh, boy, freshman, freshman running backs garnering a lot of attention 
We saw Urban this afternoon for Michigan State. Wow is all you could say after watching him. Four touchdowns. He is really something. And Amos Zaraway here tonight in Pittsburgh for the West Virginia Mountaineers also turning some hills. When we talked about momentum, I think that West Virginia has to kick this field goal or Pitt comes away with a late charge here at the half. Mike, I'm not so sure that they might not have been better served to have taken a five-yard penalty. He's got a really severe angle right here. He'd have a better angle if he was five yards back. Good thought. You practice this every day, oh. You practice the hard shots. Taylor to attempt the field goal. Let's see. We're going to spot it at the 10. Twenty-yarder. The pass. Ball is down, and he splits it. So we'll hold it right here with 19 ticks left on the clock until halftime, and our new score, West Virginia, 17 to nothing. Well, you'd like to take the air out of him with a touchdown, but the field goal accomplishes what Don Nalen wanted. Well, the highlights in this first half, here are the things that have gotten Pitt in trouble. The first time Zaraway touched the ball, this is the freshman, and Amos is off. 69 yards, and look at this cut, and look at that cut. Gets a great block from Vanderpool, the wide receiver. It takes it 69 for the score. Fourth down. Cochran rolls out, throws Anderson wide open, drops the fourth down pass. And then Vanderpool, he had already injured his ribs, and this one may have taken him out of action for a while as he comes down in the football. But as you look at Zaraway, his total yards we had just a moment ago at right at 130 yards. Back we're going to say 128 and one touchdown, and that's on only six carries. Billy West, well, he's had a tough one. He has had defensive players all over him all night long. Particularly, Baum, Thornton, Henry Slay, Canute Curtis, and Bernard Russ. They have been all over Pitts number 20. Drive kick. Snyder drops the ball. Snyder returns it to the 25 yard line. So we have 11 seconds left until halftime. We'll be checking in with Mike Tirico. In the studio, and me and Lee Corso will bring us up to date on the day's happenings in college football, and we've had some surprises. I'm shocked at what happened with the University of Georgia. Now, Southern Mississippi's been known to puncture the I, SEC's I, I bubble. I understand that, but I'm still shocked. I thought that they were going to be the sleeper team. They, they slept. Yeah, they did. Billy West, right up the middle, four seconds, down to three. They'll call a timeout as the clock will move to five seconds, but the chains will have to move. That is why they stop it. The pit calls the timeout. What Johnny Majors has to do with his ball club is when you've lost and you continue to lose, and West Virginia's beaten Pittsburgh four straight years, your confidence level is down. And he has to keep that up, and he's got a Billy West. He's got to be the guy to get him back in this football game. You can see that Billy is averaging 3.6, and it has been a tough time for him. Now, he also missed nine games last year, and his timing may take him a little bit longer. But this man right here, look at his average per carry, 21.2 for Amos Zeroway. You know, Ron, when you talk about that, Amos Zeroway's had a great first half, but give the credit to West Virginia's defense because they have controlled the line of scrimmage and with that outstanding secondary it allows you to do so many things but they're so strong up front and they have depth on defense this may be the best defense that I've seen at West Virginia in a long time now that's a lot that's saying a lot but just a talent team
title with five seconds left. And they look as though they're going to try an alley-oop. Not going to get an opportunity. Bob Ball gets the sack, and that is five sacks in this first half. They head to the locker room. That's the end of the first half with our score. West Virginia 17 and Pitt nothing. Now let's join Mike Tirico for the GMAC Halftime Report. Mike. Well, Ron, wet plays because obviously he's going to wind up with over 100 if he continues what he is doing. But Zaraway has been so spectacular with 127 first half yards. He's overshadowed what West has done. They've had better mix in their offense. Now the swoop on the return. He's got a big opening. One man to beat. They got blockers in front, and he could go. Swoop. 15, 10 at the 5, and inside the 5-yard line, it will be first and goal, West Virginia, to open the second half of play. Oh, my goodness. Ron, every first game of the year, your biggest fear as a coach is special teams because you don't really get a chance to work at full goal against uh, uh, an opponent like the pros do with the exhibition season. So all of a sudden, this is a nightmare for a coach, and special teams has played a big part in college football today. Mike, that is 91 yards on the kick return. And Just swoop. Alvin is a reserve tailback behind Zaraway. He did a great job of setting his blocks. You just see he just kept waiting for his blockers to develop. Nice job running the wedge. Chad Johnson received the ball four and a half yards away. Hollers something to his wide receivers. And he's going to throw. Locks it for the corner. And touchdown Foreman. coverage again Ron and I am very impressed with the job Chad Johnston is doing tonight for West Virginia he's not just throwing these passes he's picking up blitzes he knows when he's got man-to-man -man coverage single coverage on the outside he caught him again with Sean Foreman Jay Taylor with the extra point attempt he's got it and 20 seconds into the third quarter it is West Virginia now up by a count of 24 to nothing Take a look at Johnston. Here's the throw. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. That's Chucky Brown trying to work against Sean Foreman. He throws it to the outside where it's a catchable pass by the 6-1 receiver. Well, Vanderpool gets so much attention, as does Saunders, but Foreman, who is only a sophomore, and you look at Johnston's numbers tonight, 8 of 12, 73 yards, two touchdowns. And Chad talked with us on Thursday afternoon when we were down in Morgantown about what he thought he had accomplished during the offseason. He said he worked really hard at his conditioning because he'd always been hurt. But also, he wanted to be the mature quarterback that this football team need, needs to take them to another level. And that's just what he's done tonight, Mike. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly, Ron. And I think the other thing that's important is Chad Johnson has a great relationship with his offensive coordinator, Dan Simro. He's been his coordinator all through his career at West Virginia. And Chad Johnson, they think alike. They talk in their meetings. They understand defenses. And when you have a veteran quarterback, he can make so many things happen at the line of scrimmage after his pre-snap read. Well, there was some strong talk in the pit locker room, which we'll actually get to from Kellen uh, in just a bit. But, boy, I'll tell you what. Talk about taking the wind out of you to open a second half. 91 yards on a kick return and then the... A quick pass in the end zone for a touchdown. And special teams will do it to you. They'll let you down, and you can make a lot of hay if you've got good special teams. <laughs> 20, 21, Curtis Anderson, maybe the 22. And let's check in with Kellen. Kellen, exactly what did happen at halftime at the pit locker room? Well, Ron and Mike, first of all, Coach Majors got up, and he talked to the team about what they needed to do, the technical things, catch the football. Uh, block up front, take control of the line of scrimmage, and immediately afterwards, Hugh Green got up in a very emotional tirade, challenged them to overcome adversity, adversity to stick together no matter what happened. Then, of course, the offensive line was challenged by not only the quarterback, but the offensive coordinator. Yeah, there's going to have to be a few more challenges in this second half because the Mountaineers have already tacked one on. South Falls going to take it down the line of scrimmage. Does get by one tackler, and then it's going to be hit by John Hadley, who was a junior college transfer out of Delray Beach, Florida, number 52. 
Ron, I want to ask Kellen a question. A lot of, I've been in a lot of locker rooms, and when you get people talking like a Hugh Green, and that's all important, but the player's reaction, Kellen, that's the thing I'm more interested in. What was their reaction at halftime? Well, Coach, the offensive line looked like they were stunned. They just sat there and kind of watched. The defense was very reactive to what Hugh Green had to say. And, of course, the offensive line had not much to say to what was going on. They knew they had a terrible first half. They got beat. And then, of course, the offensive coordinator came over and challenged each offensive lineman personally, by name, directly in his face, that they were better players and they were showing out on that football field. And then, of course, Lido stepped up as a leader, encouraged them. Everything was positive. Everything was positive. Nobody was put down as being a bad player. They just wanted more effort. They wanted more desire. They wanted to see some fire that they were not seeing. Well, then this drive has to be something that works for Pittsburgh because if they, their offensive team's been challenged, it's time to deliver. The reason for the delay is there is an injury to a West Virginia player because he's surrounded by the trainers. We've been unable to pick up his number. A reminder, catch the NASCAR Mountain Dew Southern 500 tomorrow from Darlington Raceway. It starts at 1 o'clock. Jeff Gordon, currently second in the Winston Cup point standings, defends his title. Bill Jarrett could become the second driver in Winston Cup history to win the Winston Cup million with a win in this one tomorrow. 1 o'clock on ESPN. Bernard Rust, who has done an outstanding job at linebacker tonight. Watch the right side of your screen as this play develops. And I think you'll be able to see what happened to Bernard when he went down. Number 91. Well, he got caught twice, and it's hard to tell, Mike, if it's his ankle or his knee. Full back, and then they had a tackle going after him. This is Snyder, hit in the backfield, and he's going to be knocked down for a loss. It's Canute Curtis and Mike Tirico. What do you have for us, partner? Around this Louisville, Kentucky game, our McDonald's breakaway as we send you to the Commonwealth, and we're talking about Tim Couch, the Kentucky freshman quarterback who's made this a 10-point game. Don't forget Jason Payne, the quarterback from Louisville, this big 32-yard run set up at Otis Floyd, one-yard touchdown run. The Ville leading by 17. Louisville surprising Kentucky there and another one of these big rivalries that we talk about sections of the country where it is extremely important third down Lider steps up into the pocket gonna run and he's gonna be short of the first down tackled at the 29 by Hadley and Longino so Pitt will have to punt it away and Nate Cochran has been busy 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 tonight Looks like it's going to be Logan who is back deep for West Virginia since the uh, injury early on to Vanderpool. That normally is his spot on the field. And he made a great run the last punt he caught uh, against this Pitt special teams. Dawkins kick another long, long spiral. Oh, it hit Logan. The ball is alive at the one. There's a flag down as Logan breaks clear. He's going to take it out across the 20. Pitt has a player down at the one. And the play is going to come back. And Mike, with a half the distance, they're going to spin it from around the two and a half yard line. What a punt. That was an excellent punt. 72 yards on the punt. Illegal block in the back. Gets the return team. Show us a timeout. We'll be back with more from Pitt Stadium after we pause for this. Can you? Well, keep an eye on Amos, number 20. Amos Zaraway, 127 yards in the first half. And he broke one for a touchdown. In fact, his first carry in West Virginia history, 69 yards for a touchdown. Reminding you that in high school, that he broke every high school record Mike, what was it? Over 5,300 yards. He scored 59 touchdowns in high school. Pretty good running back help those two, Jimmy Brown. Zero away. 
Not going to get out of the grasp of number 80, Ernest Copley, on this play. Ernest is a little excited about it. We mentioned Ernest was a junior college transfer out of Hudson Valley Community College and played on the number one ranked junior college defense in the nation last year. He's a fast player, but he's only had about 29 practices here at the University of Pittsburgh. He wasn't. He's a junior college transfer, but he didn't get here in the spring, and he's a little bit like a wind-up toy tonight. You never know where he's going to go because he's not sure of the defense. He's not sure where he's at. Uh, he's sleeping in a different bed. He's eating different food. He's around different people. First time in front of this kind of crowd. Play action. Johnson, he's got him there, complete at the 30-yard line. Did he catch it out of bounds? No, sir. First down, West Virginia, Sean Foreman. And, Mike, we were talking during the pregame warm-ups. Vanterpool and Saunders are so impressive, I'm not so sure that Foreman is not even faster than these two guys. Uh, he's a good receiver. Play action. He threw to the split inside against the rolled-up coverage, and you see... Sean Foreman getting behind the corner, Chuck Brown, number four. But that, again, shows me the veteran play of the quarterback, Chad Johnson, realizing the coverage and putting the ball exactly where it needed to be thrown. This time the receiver's at the top of the screen as they try to come back inside with a little counter play. And uh, zero way finding the going a little bit tougher here in this third quarter on the first two carries. Ron, I thought Chad Johnston had a good quote the other day. He said they were talking about, uh, they asked him if he thought he'd be a pro quarterback, and he said, if West Virginia could find me in Peterstown, West Virginia, which is a small community, he says the NFL should certainly find me in Morgantown. But he always wanted to be the West Virginia quarterback. He's a native of the state. It means something to him to come to the university at West Virginia and be their quarterback. Homegrown. Yeah, that's right. And Don Nealon paid him the kindest compliment that you can. He said he, he's got a good arm and he is very smart and he can beat you in a lot of different ways. Zips the pass complete. This time it's to Saunders. And it will be a first down out of the 45-yard line. And again, let's go to Kellen Winslow. Kellen. Ron, adding to what happened with uh, Chad Johnston over the summer, he stayed here in Morgantown along with about 80 other players from West Virginia and worked his butt off getting in better shape, getting leaner, more muscle mass, less fat, and becoming the mature leader that he needed to be for this team this year. The coaches were ecstatic about the fact that he was here all summer long. Well, the interesting thing about that, uh, Kellen, is the fact that they had... I think 82 players who stayed over in Morgantown this year. That's far and away more players than they had ever had. He used the motion. Jerry with the run. And look at the quick little step. Couldn't get by Page. Big Solomon Page. That offensive tackle, 6'6", 300. Couldn't dance by him. And then the defense got him. Every now and then, you've got to be able to run the ball out of split backs. When, when you split the backs, it's really a pass formation. There are a few runs. You can run a draw. You can run a trap. You can run a power sweep. But people expect when you're in a split back to throw the football, which West Virginia has done very successfully tonight. Every now and then, you've got to run the football. Even though that play didn't gain a lot of yards, Ron, that will help this offense. Eight consecutive completions by Johnston. He's now 10 of 14 for 115 yards and two touchdowns. Got it complete to his tight end, Wable, who fumbles out of bounds, so it'll be dead right there at the 38-yard line. You see the beanbag come down. And let's check in once again with Mike Tirico. Michael. Well, Ron, Steve Sarkeesian lit up Texas A&M for six touchdowns. It's the Indians of Arkansas State tonight. They're in Provo, 15 yards to Kaipo McGuire. That's the first score, and BYU leads by seven. Ron, that BYU game that was on ABC with Brent Musburger and Dick Vermeil, they did a great job on that game. And that might have been the most exciting college game I've seen in a long time. Steve Sarkeesian really played great in that game for BYU. It's a tough offense to have to open the season in their backyard against. Now they go with the fullback. There's nothing there. It's Plants. And he was submarined at the line of scrimmage by Mike Mooring, the big senior out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. And you know Carl Benson, the commissioner of the WAC, had to be happy because this super alliance is trying to squeeze the whack out. You can't squeeze the whack out. That's college football. Everybody be involved in a championship. And I thought they sent a message to not only the Big 12, but college football. That, hey, let's don't forget about the whack. That's a pretty good conference. 
Yeah, for everybody, I think, that plays BYU or Utah or San Diego State, those guys, they'll, they'll have their hands full. It's Kerry Mott in motion at the top of your screen. Still looking deep over the middle. Got it complete at the 15-yard line. And again, it's Chad Wabel, his tight end. 6'5", 250. And Maurice Harris makes the tackle on him, and they spot it inside the 15. It's good for 23 yards. What West Virginia did there was motion out to tailback Amos Zaraway and throw all vertical routes. All four receivers went, were going down the field with streak routes, and he just read the middle of the field and was able to get the ball in. He's reading the middle of the football field right now, and now he finds the receiver, number 87, Chad Wabel. Well, if, if Chad Johnston wanted to make his mark as far as opening the season and making an impression, he certainly has. Zero away. Spins, turns, going to have four at the 11. Curtis McGee from his strong safety and Maurice Harris there to combine on the stop. You see number 90, Maurice. We talked about West Virginia visiting the 49ers and Bill Walsh's offense in 1995, 76 receptions by the wide receivers. And you see the tight end, fullbacks, tailbacks, nothing. But all of a sudden tonight, three by the tailbacks, one by the tight end. And that might be small tonight, but you're going to see them grow in each week of the season. This is a different offense, a little tougher for people to defend. Zaraway on the sweep, cuts it back inside, three, four and short of the first down it's going to be third and he'll need a couple Johnson now Johnson has completed 10 in a row his number is 12 of 16 for 158 Ron you made the statement that Don Nalen said he beat you with his arm and his head he has done as much damage to Pittsburgh tonight with his head uh, and and you, just the subtle things that you see, calling the trap at the line of scrimmage against the three technique where a guard's outside of the guard. Seeing that man coverage is both corners are over on the side against a two receiver side, knowing the blitz is coming, picking it up and hitting Vanderpool. Hitting Foreman in the end zone against man coverage. And he has just pushed all the right buttons tonight. He's, he's really been simple. poised. He's worked very hard on his feet. That's one of the things that, that he complained about himself. He said, I don't have great feet and I'm not going to beat you there. But he has not beaten himself with it either. You see him stand up immediately and tell Foreman, no, you're setting wrong. He, he's changing the play. He's changing probably to a run or a play action pass. Zeroway tries to bounce it outside. Whoa, does he get hit? Plays over. The helmet came off. That is a new rule this year, which is it. You see him marking it back before he made forward progress to the five. It's a good new rule they've got this year, Mike. Folks, nobody knows the rules better than my man right here, Ron. Now, he knows the rules, and you're exactly right, a new one. And but you got to get your head knocked off to do it. <laughs> yeah. on, on TV. That's McGee who came up and made the hit. Well, just think, if the, if the tailback went out, made a move and gets hit, and then the helmet goes off, and he takes off and uh, runs for a lot of yards, it's coming back. He had to go out of the ball game. I don't know if he was shaken up or he was trying to get that headgear fixed. Field goal. Taylor knocks it home. And we have West Virginia now on top by a count of 27 to nothing. Let's take a break. 5.59 left in this third quarter. We'll be right back. 27 to nothing now. West Virginia on top. Zeroway got his headgear taken care of. And the reason, of course, he was going off the field is because he is not on the special teams. As you look at Hackett, he prepares to kick it off for the Mountaineers. And they have uh, handed the Panthers a pit a zero so far. We still have six minutes to go, third quarter. Curtis Anderson, 25-30, and he got hit with an ankle-high tackle. That's the only thing that kept him from going further. And next Saturday night, we got some action from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, and I think this young man right here, Donovan McNabb, Mike is getting as much attention as anybody. Ron, he does it all. He runs the option. He runs the play-action passing game and he can run the football, but more than that, he's an, he's an exceptional throwing quarterback. We saw last year in the game against North Carolina, he came alive, and 
North Carolina won today, and they have an advantage playing that one game uh, against Paul Pascaloni next week. Left-handers pass, caught over the middle. McMullen, the tight end, the freshman. Speaking to Paul, he's going to be with us here in just a few minutes. We're going to have him by way of radio, by way of phone, I should say. He is uh, watching the game in his home up in Syracuse, maybe in the office. I'm not sure. No, he's but at the office. Paul, I want to tell you this, and you can be mulling this over as you prepare for North Carolina next week. They not only won today, they held Clemson to 91 total yards. Leon Johnson, two touchdowns. 146 yards and we'll, we'll get those other numbers in in just a second after the play Lida got it away incomplete boy he was under all kind of duress and look at Jones telling the official he was holding on to my jersey Mike Tirico let's check back with you well, Ron, we know how tough Mike Adamley became to deal with for you guys on our primetime crew with Northwestern's great year. How about Kellen Winslow's Missouri Tigers? Ernest Blackwell, the fullback, a 21-yard run. And in Austin, Missouri is within three, halfway through the second quarter. Ron. All righty. That surprises me a little bit. Playing that ball game, at, it's not official yet, but at Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium just voted on on oh, Thursday to, that's to out, name that. Rename. That's outstanding. That's well deserved. Kellen Winslow is going to have to start giving more money to Missouri's athletic department like Mike, Mike Adamley and Adrian Carson to Northwestern. <laughs> that's right. Billy West takes the pass and he gets hit immediately by Amarison, the senior out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, number 58. 6'2", 225, who is uh, coming to the lineup, replacing Bernard Russ, who was shaken up a while ago. I think of that when I talk about giving money. You know, when you're at Pittsburgh and playing against West Virginia, your boosters are all the same people. One of our best boosters was boosters was Anthony Crane Company, the largest Crane Company, but they were also Don Nealon's uh, biggest booster. So you had to win this game to be able to go to those people and uh, <laughs> see them. So that's what makes this game so tough in the first game of the year. Under five to play, third quarter. Flag is down and a nice defensive play. Bastine, Perlo Bastine, the senior from Monticello, Florida, with parallel to knock it down. You made a point a minute ago about a defensive player for West Virginia complaining about being held. Holding on the now, You complain sometimes, but you can get the ear of an umpire every now and then if you say, hey, you say it nicely. You don't scream at him. You don't yell. You call him Mr. Referee, and uh, they may give you one. I don't say that they gave them one on this, but uh, you bring it to their attention. Well, Mr. Monk said it was declined, so it's fourth down. By the way, coming up later in the game, we'll be selecting the Visa players of the game. Logan standing back deep at the 10-yard line. We talk about Logan off the top of the telecast. Some of the pro scouts think that he might be able to move on to the next level to play. They like Mike Logan quite a bit. Senior out of McKeesport, 61205, a corner. Gonna let this one go, and it'll get by the pit defender. 48 yards in the kick, and they're gonna take a break. 426 to play. Third. 27 to nothing. West Virginia on top. We're late in the third, and let's take a look at the preseason poll in the Big East. Syracuse by seven points over Miami, then Virginia Tech, West Virginia, Boston College, Pitt, Temple, and Rutgers. And we'll talk with Paul Pasqualoni about that preseason pick in just a moment, and also about next Saturday night's game, which he will play in the Carrier Dome against North Carolina. Right now, our situation, first down, West Virginia at their own 20. Barry Mott, 5, 10, 15, 20, and he's off to the races. Zeroway already has one from 69, and Mott's going to be caught from behind by Chucky Brown, and they're going to say he's down at the 17-yard line. That is a run of 62 yards. So firing the big guns. 69 yards, Mike, and now a 62-yarder from scrimmage. Well, again, good balance in their offense. They're able to throw the football. This is out of split backs. Kerry Mott gets a good block on the right side. Now he uses great cutback. You see, he doesn't switch the ball. Keeps the ball in his right arm, which I like. In the old days, they wanted you to switch the ball to the outside, but sometimes you switch it in traffic and get it stripped and fumble it. So I like that about him. That old, uh, that old expression looked like the bear cut attempt on his back there, didn't it? Well, he didn't <laughs> expect to go that far, I don't believe. Somebody catch me. <laughs> Short drop, pass to the end zone, uh, dropped it. That is his first incompletion. As a 
Whit his covered. last 11 passes. That's the first one. That Outstanding Whitmill coverage the by Rashad Whitmill, number two. He played that about as well as you can play it as a corner. Again, he has not practiced. He's been hurt with a groin injury and has come out here tonight and really given great effort to this pit team. So it's going to be second down. Foreman to the top of your screen. I beg your pardon, it's 18 Ken Fisher. Foreman to the bottom of your screen. Swoop. Going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage and now a third down situation. And Paul Pasqualoni, I know, is standing by at his office and let's let's bring him in as we watch this West Virginia drive. Paul, uh, what were your thoughts after watching Carolina today as they destroyed Clemson? Uh, Ron, they were awfully, awfully impressive. Uh, their defense, the, the leading defense in the ACC last year was just tremendously impressive. They've got young corners and a great front seven. Uh, so they were very, very impressive. You and your staff watched that in your office. You told us 91 yards to hold anybody to, particularly Clemson. Uh, had the surprise even Mac Brown, I would say. Back inside the 10, and he's down to the one-yard line. Back thought he got in, but they say no. Paul, you've got to be impressed with West Virginia offensively tonight. Yeah, we really are, Mike. You know, the... Chad Johnson, they've got the veteran quarterback who's throwing with great accuracy and just providing great leadership. They've got great running backs, outstanding wide receivers, and they're playing great defense. Paul, let me go back to your game next week. I, I made a statement that I thought that it was an advantage to North Carolina to have that game under its belt and playing. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to it after this play, Paul. First down and goal. The ball just inside the one-yard line. Fumble the snap by Johnson, and he gets on it at the three. They're about two and a half. But, Paul, you guys have got to be ready to play. You're probably tired of hitting each other. You no, know, we really are, Mike. You know, by the time you get through a preseason camp, the kids are sick and tired of, you know, really hitting each other. And looking forward, you know, to, to playing the game. Things were going well uh, for us uh, today watching that game. Uh, we've got uh, – we're looking forward to the game, just not looking forward to North Carolina coming up. Well – as they come to the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take this one more play, and then I want to get your thoughts on your quarterback. You have talked about the leadership of Johnston, but we'll get to it after this play right here. Play action. Got him. Touchdown, Fisher. By golly, when things are going right, they go right. I think he was throwing it to the tight end, and Fisher was just behind him to catch it for the touchdown. Yeah, I think Beck 82 was the intended <laughs> receiver. He may have got a hand on that ball, but you practice deflections, and Ken Fisher was waiting for that one, and Don Nalen <laughs> is smiling just like you said. Don right now is saying, okay, in that postseason press conference, they're going to say, no, it was designed to go to Fisher. And Knute Curtis was in on the uh, play and made a good block, the two-way performer, the outstanding defensive player. Jay Taylor knocks home the extra point as Johnny Majors makes notes, and this man walks and smiles. Here's number 42, Knute Curtis, an outstanding defensive player, blocking here to make him think it's going to be a run, and pretty good block. Now, I wouldn't be surprised he sees a little more action. It run right through the hands of Anthony Heck, Beck, right uh -huh. to Ken Fisher, number 18. Good concentration when you can bring a ball in like that. Coach, uh, and in case you've just joined us, we're visiting with Paul Pasqualoni of uh, Syracuse, who will be our feature game next week against North Carolina. Talk about your quarterback. We got to see Donovan McNabb last year down at Chapel Hill, and his physical abilities are so totally impressive. Yeah, he's a very, very Ron, very talented guy. Throws the ball extremely well, and of course, is a great athlete. You know, and maybe the, the greatest pleasure about having Donovan is that he's such a great kid, has such a tremendous demeanor, and really loves people, and really doesn't have a negative bone in his whole body with a great, happy personality, and just a pleasure to be around. Paul, one quick question, and we'll let you go as we're about to kick it off here. We've had zero way at this ball game today, a freshman who has jumped up and shocked the world. We had Urban today at East Lansing. Have you had a freshman who has jumped out that we don't know about that could surprise next week? Well, we've got uh, a couple of talented freshmen. I just don't know if, uh, you know, one of our guys is going to be uh, in a position to have the kind of night uh, that Amos uh, has had here tonight, just tremendously impressive. 
All right, hold on. we got one more question for you after this kickoff. Whitmill. And he will be stopped at the 19. Mike? Paul, you've got great admiration for the job you've done at Syracuse, and everybody's kind of given you the fact that you're the best team in the Big East because you're playing Virginia Tech and Miami at home. I, I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way. I don't think you can just because you're playing them home. The, Virginia Tech returns a lot of talented players, but uh, it is an advantage, right? Well, it is always an advantage to have these people at home, but you've got uh, teams, you know, you've got quite a few teams, Mike, in this conference. You've got Miami, Virginia Tech, you've got West Virginia here really coming back this season, and you can see it right now. So all of that stuff is great on paper, but you don't win a conference championship on paper. Well, that, that goes without saying. That pass is incomplete. Paul, we'll let you go. We appreciate you taking part of your busy Saturday night. I know it's been a busy day as you start preparing for North Carolina. We look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Uh, have a good week's preparation. Thank you very much. Paul Pasqualone, the excellent head coach of the Syracuse Orangemen. Well, Ron, everything's you know, going. Well, Mike, well, go ahead. What's interesting is they pounded. Didn't they pound that same Clemson team that North Carolina pounded today? You're right. In, in the bowl game. game. So Clemson uh, facing a couple of teams that face off next week. If that's any indication. Wow, we got a heck of a contest next week in the Deuce. Pass tipped, almost intercepted, and incomplete. Count the number of passes tonight that's been dropped by the pit receivers. Kirk McMullen, a tight end, and walk on and earned a scholarship. Uh, there's been at least four of them tonight that's going right through the hands of the pit receivers. Not Matt Lytle's fault. Matt Lytle is an outstanding athlete who not only is a quarterback, Mike, when he was in high school in the top 100 baseball prospects by USA in America, he was number 37. He's a pitcher, but he wants to make it in the National Football League. And he's used to winning. He won 30 games as a high school starter as a quarterback. They got to get a third down conversion here. They're only one of nine on the evening. Pressure from the outside and just has to throw that one away. So it'll be fourth down and Pitt will have to punt again. And that's not Lytle's fault. Look at the defense, the Mountaineers enjoying what has happened so far, and why not? And Nate Cochran has lettered tonight in this first game. He's not only punted a lot, he's punted well. Punted 72 times last year. You should get two letters. Not across the 35. Maybe to the 37 yard line. That was swoop. Well, catch a triple header on ESPN2 next Saturday, Eastern Michigan against Wisconsin. That's at 12 30 Eastern Time. And Mike and I will be at North Carolina Syracuse at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. And then there is one more ball game Colorado against Colorado State, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. All next week on the Deuce. And our buddy Mike Adamley, he's the host for ESPN2. Yeah. Uh, he's here, did a great job today. A little bit of celebration begins on the sideline. I'm sure he waits with great anticipation, as does Adrian Karsten, over the beginning of the Northwestern series season. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that, and that is just the fullbacks, either green or plants, into the line and uh, eat up some clock by West Virginia. Well, you're, you're right now, it's just kind of, but, but still, you want to throw the ball, and you still want to keep your offense moving. You don't want to lose any momentum. Uh, you're talking about Adrian Karsten and uh, Mike Adamley, and Mike Patrick's a big West Virginia fan. Yeah, and, that's right. And I he forgot about idolized Jack Fleming, the veteran announcer. Uh, it's been such a uh, historic part of uh, athletics in West Virginia. 45 years. He kept up here in the booth tonight. Jack was a longtime friend, used to do the Steelers, and uh, came up and said hi. Look at Green. Green takes it across midfield into the 46. You talk about family ties and how things carry over. Anthony Green's dad played uh, for Nealon at Bowling Green and then went on to play for the Giants, was a, uh, a defensive back. Joe Green, and uh, he uh, played for Don there, and they had a lot of success at Bowling Green. And then, of course, Bowling Green decided they didn't want Don Nealon as coach anymore, a decision they probably regret. 
And then he went to Michigan, was an assistant for three seasons, and then landed a job at West Virginia. And he's won more games than any other coach at West Virginia. He's done a great job at West Virginia. Hard to believe this is his uh, 17th season. Green again takes it to the right side, and that probably will be the final play of this third quarter. Yep, nobody's going to stop it here, so the clock winds down and we'll take a timeout as we prepare for the final 15 minutes from Pitt Stadium. West Virginia cruising right now. Thirty-four to nothing. That's the upside for the fans from Morgantown, West Virginia. The downside is now Bernard Russ has hobbled off the field, being helped to the locker room. And right now the numbers uh, are growing as far as injuries that they have been on the defensive side of the ball. Jason Williams was injured. Bernard Russ seen here being helped off the field. Ankle injuries by Logan and Washington had slowed them for tonight's ball game. So. John Malin has uh, got some bumps and bruises in this early going. That's going to be enough for the first down as he'll take it to the 35. And now Alvin Swoop takes over as uh, Malin wants to get some, some time for Swoop and Mott, who are veteran performers. Zaraway is on the bench. And even though you have that headset on and you're calling plays, Dan Semro's calling plays through Don Nathan, your thoughts are with your injured players because, first of all, you know how hard they've worked. Second of all, you're looking ahead and you know you got to keep building depth. And this bothers him probably more. He's, he's yeah. got a good feeling, but it bothers him that good players are going down and they've worked so hard for this opportunity. Chad Johnston goes for the end zone. Knocked away. That was Beck, the intended receiver. Kasparovich had the, uh, the cover. I rode down the elevator with him today, and I said, young man, do me a favor. Pronounce your name three times. <laughs> Here's the 49er offense. There's three receivers out to the strong side. The tight end is going down the football field. Beck, number 82. You've got a back out in the flat, and you've got the tight end, or the receiver, Foreman, coming in motion. So you've got three opportunities to the strong side to hit that pass. Mike, if you do anything on this drive right here, I think this guy hits for the sidelines as well. Chad Johnston, don't you? Oh, I think without a doubt. Swoop breaks off one tackle. He'll take it uh, with a tough carry to the 33, and let's check in with Kellen Winslow down on the sideline. Kellen? Well, Chad Johnston has had a great game. Let's, let's don't forget to mention that he is a um, nominee for the Unitas Award and has gotten off to a great start this year. Of course, Unitas Award named after Johnny Unitas for the best quarterback in the nation last year won by Nebraska's Tommy Frazier. And, and Kellen, to add to that, uh, he's a smart kid. Uh, he's a pharmacy major, and his coach, Dan Simmel, was telling me he's taken 18 hours, so they've tried to work the time to meet uh, during the day, so he's carrying a heavy load. Not only a good football player, but a good student. When does he sleep? <laughs> Tonight. Very disciplined young man. There's a blitz coming after him, and his quick pass over the middle. Got it complete to Foreman. And Foreman bounces off a tackler, and with that second effort, he's going to have the first down. See, here's, John Jenkins finally got it. I'm sorry, Ron. Here again is the, the, the Bill Walsh offense. Throw the ball. You're going to get a receiver coming across the field. Making this catch at Sean Foreman. It's only a two or three yard pass completion. Now, when he catches that ball, it's two yards. But now, Ala Jerry Rice, if you miss the tackle, he attacks the underneath coverage. You miss the tackle, you miss another one. Then all of a sudden, you turn a two yard pass into an eight yard gain. It's the beauty of the offense. Yak, yards after the catch. That's right. And he calls a timeout. Either didn't like the set or the defense he was looking at. So there's a timeout on the field. 13 7 to play in our ball game. And the Panthers down 34 zip. ESPN's presentation of Saturday Primetime is being brought to you by Jeep, makers of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. And by new Speed Stick Gel. It's unbeatable gel protection, just for the guys. Well, back to live action. They were about to snap the ball, and uh, a flag has gone down. So we'll check with uh, Mr. Muck and see what 
Looks like they're picking the flag up. Dead ball, Dead ball. encroachment from the neutral zone <laughs> on the offense. Marking five yards. Down. Well, good, good for whoever did it because we would have missed the play had it not. And it also gives us an opportunity to say a very happy birthday to our good friend Beano Cook. He has a birthday tomorrow, 65 years. Well, I'm Beano. I'm sorry, Mike transposed that number. I know it's 55. 56. Some people call him a football guru. Other people call him a lot of other things, and it ain't guru. I can tell you that. He's a good man. Happy birthday, Beano gonna be sacked and that's Coakley who comes across in the blitz and gets him from behind and Mike one of the things that's the first sack that they've had on Johnston tonight but one of the guys as far as a report card for a good ball game tonight that will make Pittsburgh smile although they're down 34 to nothing Coakley has shown for himself pretty well, don't well I you said think? he was a wind-up toy because he only practiced 28 days so he didn't know where he was gonna go but Ernest Coke was a football player they, they were able to tell that in early fall practice he's just gonna get better and better each day he's a Pittsburgh football player he learns what to do on the outside and the ball is dropped swoop had a huge hole there had to go back and get the football, and Curtis McGee <laughs> came over to make the defensive play. I don't think that was the play. You know, Gail Catlett, the respected basketball coach of West Virginia, came out the other day. They have a great relationship, Don Nalen and he. They've been together so long, and Don Nalen says he comes out every year and gives me a play. I don't know if it was that one, though. Well, let's give him credit. Because there was a little dribbling there on the ball. <laughs> Catlett gets credit for that one. Gail's a very, very good basketball coach. Pat Green, number 21. We've seen him in the ball game now at wide receiver. Johnson with the running play. Swoop again. Five, six, seven. It'll be inside the 25-yard line as that huddle continues to go to the south. Mooring is the man who got a shoulder on him. I would think this is going to be about the end of Chad Johnston for tonight. He's got 11-19 on the board. Uh, I would think that probably the next series we'll see the backup quarterback. Fourth down, Terry. My ball. Balls up to the 25-yard line. Official time. Official time. Got injury. Bill Johnston comes back out at his fourth down. That's it. That's it. Here we go. Look face, 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 face. Call safety back out. He's there. He's okay, better be careful with those microphones down there. That's <laughs> we're around some guys who could be a little frustrated. Fourth down and 14. Fourth down and 14. And I'd look for a running play, don't you, Mike? I'm not sure what they're doing. Whether they're going to kill it here or just try to throw the ball down the field. And they are going to run it. I mean, are going to throw it. Johnston deep over the middle, almost intercepted by Coakley. So Pitt will take it over at the 25-yard line of the take a break with him. 34 to nothing. West Virginia, just over 10 to play. Chad Johnston takes off the headsets from the appearance of that. He might be coming back in. But uh no, I think he's gone. I'd, I'd be surprised if he came back in. Yeah, right? I would too. I think yeah. we're gonna see Mark Bolger whose dad was a backup to Joe Theismann. Joe Theismann, that's right, at Notre Dame. You didn't know I knew that, did you? I knew you knew. I know you know everything. You read my notes. <laughs> Good reception by Curtis Anderson. Curtis, you know, Mike, you go back to the beginning of this football game and all the what-ifs that can happen. As you can see him moving kind of gingerly. What if he catches that fake punt and they get the ball down inside the 15-yard line and take it in and score right there? You know, little things like that are not little. It could turn a football game around. Probably be 34 to 7 now, but, <laughs> but because I think West Virginia has dominated yeah. Pittsburgh tonight. I, I don't think uh, you're right, or little things you can't lose opportunities. Lytle drills this one to the 45. That's to Anderson, and that right there showed what kind of ability.